Hello and welcome. Uh, this episode, in this episode, I'm going to cover energy. So, in the last episode, I was talking about the different kinds of change. Talking about, um, I was talking about chemical change and physical change, right? But all changes require energy. So it's only uh, apropos that I am going to be talking about energy in this episode here. So. Um, so let's start with different kinds of energy. Um, so I was talking about how um, changes require energy. So you could do physical changes, right? So for example, um, the water on your skin when you're sweating, when that water evaporates, uh, it requires energy. So it absorbs energy from your body and it evaporates, goes from a liquid to a vapor or a gas. And in the process, it cools you down because it's taking the energy from your, the heat from your body. So that requires energy. Um, <clears throat> another example is cooking food on your stove. So you are burning the uh, natural gas coming from your stove. If you've got a gas stove um, or maybe the electrical energy or the heat energy that's coming from the electricity is then <clears throat> absorbed by the food that you're cooking. Um, it's causing chemical changes in the food, perhaps, um, and then therefore it's requiring energy as well. So changes require energy, physical and chemical changes require energy. So what about um, the energy? So we're going to have to uh, define a few terms before we move forward. Uh, one term is, of course, we have to define what energy is. Okay, so energy... Energy is the ability to do work or capacity to do work. Okay. Oops. So the capacity to do work. So what does that mean? I mean, we, we kind of understand that pretty, uh, pretty clearly from our own everyday experiences. So <clears throat> um, I'm only able to do something if I have the energy to do it. If I have no energy, I can't do it, right? <clears throat> so, um, so for example, lifting weights. If uh, if I don't have the energy to lift the weight, I'm not going to lift the weight. So when I lift the weight, um, I'm going to expend energy doing that. And if I can lift the weight, it's because I have that energy. I have the capacity to do work, to pick up a weight. Um, <clears throat> um, things like that. We use this kind of understanding in our everyday common language, right? So it's like, you know, I get home after a hard day at work and my wife wants me to do the dishes and I'm like, I can't, I don't have any energy, right? I can't do work because um, I'm exhausted, right? So you need energy to do the work that you need to do, right? <clears throat> so capacity to do work, that's pretty straightforward. There's nothing special about that. Uh, but what about work? Work has, uh, in this context, a technical meaning, right? So it has a, a specific meaning in science, in physics, um, and that is that <clears throat> work is the, um, the uh, applying of a force through a distance, right? So uh, that is a very technical, specific idea of work. So work... is the, one way to put it is the applying of a force through a distance. <clears throat> so in other words, um, a force is any push or pull. You're pulling on something, you're pushing on something, and you're going to push on that thing moving it that's the idea uh, through a distance so I'm if I push on something I apply a force and I move it through a distance I am doing work um, so if I am pushing on the board or on the wall right so if I push I'm applying a force but the wall is not going anywhere am I expending energy yeah I am expending energy because I'm sweating I'm getting hot so the energy in my muscles 
again, um, that's a type of energy. The chemical energy in my muscles is being used and being converted into heat and stuff like that, but I'm not doing work uh, because when I push on the wall, it's not moving, okay? Um, <clears throat> so that that is a specific definition of, of work, okay? So applying a, a, a distance, applying a force through a distance, moving an object, okay? Um, the thing to also keep in mind is that the total energy is going to be, um, uh, okay, well, before I get to the total energy, let me, let me um, specify this a little bit. So let me distinguish between two kinds of energy. Um, one is kinetic energy. And the kinetic energy is the energy associated with motion. So anytime something is moving, that has kinetic energy. So we're going to call that the uh, energy associated with motion. And that's where kinetic comes from comes from the Greek for referring to motion, okay? Um, the other one is potential energy. So potential energy. <clears throat> uh, potential energy has to do with um, energy associated with position or composition, right? So energy the energy associated with, with position or composition. <clears throat> so with uh, kinetic energy and potential energy, um, these are two types of energy. The other type that I mentioned, I'll, I'll talk about uh, chemical energy in a moment. Um, but these are the two basic fundamental kinds. So all, all of the total energy in a system is going to be a combination of kinetic and potential. And you can specify different kinds of these, but the two basic kinds are going to be potential and kinetic. So the total energy <clears throat> is going to be equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy, right? So for example, um, let's take me uh, holding this marker up at a certain height, right? So right now, due to its position from the ground or from the center of the earth, whatever your point of reference frame is, um, it has a certain amount of potential energy. So right now it's not moving, so there's no kinetic energy, but it has a certain amount of potential energy. If I let it go, gravity is going to act on this marker and it's gonna cause it to move towards the ground. And during that process, it, the potential energy is going to be converted into uh, kinetic energy until it hits the, the ground. So if I let go, it hits the ground, it falls, so as it's falling, it's losing potential energy because the position is changing. So it's from high to low. But what's happening to the potential energy? It's got to go somewhere. It just doesn't disappear. So as it's falling, it's being converted into kinetic energy, the energy of motion. So as soon as I let it go, it starts moving because of gravity. And then that potential energy gets converted to kinetic energy as it's falling. So the more potential energy that's lost going down, it goes the faster it's going. So the more kinetic energy. Um, so not only that, what happens when the marker hits the ground, right? So if the marker hits the ground, where did that energy go, right? So it stopped moving. So where did the energy go? The kinetic energy then goes into the ground, right? Some of it is gonna go in the ground in the form of heat. So, um, so that's going to be another type of energy, thermal energy. 
Um, the, so the ground is going to heat up just a little bit, um, very, very slightly. Um, also, you all heard the sound. So some of that energy went into sound waves, right? So the, the sound waves that were created, the, so sound waves have a certain amount of energy that came from the, orig the uh, kinetic energy as it hit the ground, right? So that energy is converted into other, other forms of energy. So let me write that down. So I'm going to erase this. Um, well, actually, I think I have some room down here. So we have thermal energy. And thermal energy is going to be the energy associated with the temperature of an object. Okay, so <clears throat> this is going to be a, a t thermal energy, so when I, it hits the ground, the ground is going to heat up just a little bit. Why? Well, thermal energy is a, is a type of kinetic energy. Well, why is that? Uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, what happens is that the energy, if, if thermal energy is a measure associated with the temperature of the object, the temperature of the object is associated with the motion of the atoms or molecules in the substance, right? So the higher the temperature, the more the substance, or the more the molecules are moving. So more higher temperature means more energy, more motion in the molecules and atoms. Lower temperature means uh, less motion, right? So there's kinetic energy, or what is also referred to as internal kinetic energy of the substance um, is related to the motion of the atoms and molecules. So um, also the, the sound waves are also motion, uh, is related to the motion of molecules. So you also have kinetic energy there as well. Um, and so those are, again, that's a type of energy that is going to be important in chemistry because we're going to talk about thermodynamics and things like that, but that's going to be later on in another, another video later on. Okay, so we have <clears throat> the falling of the marker and the converting of that into, into, from potential energy to kinetic energy and then thermal energy and so on. All right, so what do we get from this? There are two principles that we get out of the very important principles that, we, that are shown in this demonstration of the falling marker or falling object. Okay, the first principle is... Energy is neither created nor destroyed. It is only changed or transformed. So, so you never lose energy uh, in your system, right? So as long as you're counting for everything, you, you should not lose any energy. It's not created. It's not destroyed. It just changes from one form to another, okay? Um, and we saw that in the marker example. So you first start with potential energy. Actually, we start with chemical energy in my arm because I have to hold up the marker, so as I'm holding up the marker, I'm using up energy in my molecules. Those of you who take in uh, biology or biochemistry might be familiar with ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So ATP is a molecule that is our energy molecule. So I'm using that up as I'm holding up and keeping it at 
a certain potential energy. As soon as I let go, it gets converted into kinetic energy. When it hits the ground, that kinetic energy is then converted into different kinds of energy, different kinds of other kinetic energy like uh, the air, um, sound waves and heat uh, in, in the ground. Okay, so energy is neither created nor destroyed. This is also referred to as the first law of thermodynamics. Okay. Okay, so that's the first principle. The second principle is that um, systems have a tendency to go from high potential energy to low potential energy. Systems have a tendency to go from high potential energy to low potential energy. Okay, that is, this is a very important um, concept to keep in mind as you're learning chemistry because a lot of what happens in chemistry is to move the system towards a lower potential energy. Okay. This is why electrons like to fall down to a ground state close to the nucleus of the atom because it's lower potential energy. This is why um, opposite charges attract. This is why same charges repel. It all has to do with lowering the potential energy. This is why certain crystals form certain kinds of shapes and certain structures because that allows them to lower uh, have a, a minimum potential energy or what is also referred to as lattice energy, right? So this is all going to be covered later, but I want you to keep in mind this idea of going from high potential energy to low potential energy. So the system with the marker, the marker has a high potential energy. I let it go. It tendency is to fall down because of gravity. So it lowers the potential energy. Okay. So this is very important point to make. Okay. So keep that in mind. So the other thing is um, to keep in mind is <clears throat> the idea that we can harness this potential energy, right? So um, so how can we harness the potential energy of a falling object? Um, there's a, a, a many different ways, but the one way that comes to my mind uh, okay, so, uh, is an elevator. So, an example example is an elevator. Now, an elevator, not all elevators are the same. If you have a hydraulic uh, elevator, then it's going to be a little bit different. You're not using uh, a, a weight to balance out this, uh, the uh, elevator. Um, so that's going to be a little bit different, but the principle probably apply, applies to that system as well if I gave it more thought. Um, but what I'm thinking is more of a pulley system uh, elevator where you have a counterweight to the elevator, right? So there, in the elevator, you have your pulley right and here's your elevator right a bad looking elevator and maybe here's your counterweight right so <clears throat> here you're able to harness the potential energy in the weight right so as the weight goes down you're able to harness that to do work on the elevator to bring it up and the elevator can do work on the weight as well because the elevator works as, as a weight as well. So um, the elevator would go down, then this weight will go up. So you're doing work on the elevator through the counterweight, right? So <clears throat> this is an example of where you can harness that potential energy 
and convert it so that you can do work on in the system, right? And again, we're gonna when we talk about work and energy later, we're gonna talk all about um, how these are related to each other. Um, another way you can harness the energy, and this is getting more to chemistry, is through um, chemicals, through the chemical bonds of, of a substance. So you can think of molecules as having high potential energy and low potential energy. And again, remember the system, uh, systems tend to go to want to go to lower potential energy. So if you have like, for example, uh, gasoline, So this is the substance you use to, to move your car, right? So in order to harness the energy in the gasoline, you have to burn it, right? So the gasoline is gonna get burned and you're gonna convert it into other substances. One of those substances is gonna be water, some water form. You're gonna have carbon dioxide, you're gonna have some carbon monoxide, <clears throat> some other nitrate or nitrogen oxide molecules um, that <clears throat> that are bad for the environment, you know, and things like this. So, but these molecules are going to be more stable, and they're going to be less potential energy in these molecules than in this one. So, another thing you want to keep in mind is when we're talking about uh, low potential energy, you want to think, think about stability as well. So low potential energy is more stable than high potential energy. Think again of a boulder on a, mount, on a hill, right? So you have a steep hill. So the, the boulder on the hill has a high potential energy and it's not as stable because if you can push it a little bit, it would roll down the hill until it reaches a lower point where the the rock is not going to move anymore and it's going to be a lot more stable at the bottom of the hill than at the top of the hill. So we want to associate, especially in chemistry and chemical reactions, that um, the system is moving from high uh, or low stability, high potential energy to uh, uh, high stability, low potential energy. So that's going to be a common theme that you want to keep in mind when you're thinking about what's going on in chemical reactions. Okay, um, so so that's a big idea. So so for chemicals, you're gonna have like so here we have high potential energy, and then you're gonna have low potential energy or high stability. So these are more stable. high stability, and this is gonna be low stability. Okay, so that's pretty much what I wanted to cover for today. Um, and so keep in mind, so uh, these ideas that uh, we're talking about in chemistry, we're talking about energy, we're talking about this conversion from high potential energy to low potential energy. This has to do with, uh, this is gonna happen in reactions. So what causes reactions to occur? Why do we get electrons transferring from one element to another? Why does an element want to be positive rather than negative? So it all really comes down to lowering, lowering the, the potential energy of the system. Okay, so in the next uh, video, we're gonna start to get into uh, the metric system and conversion factors. So the next few videos um, are going to be focused more on the, the math involved in chemistry. Thank you.